So I'm stacking the Late Kick Extra podcast. I was in here recording it late last night, and I saw a question come across the feed, and it was, what is your favorite college road trip of all time? Now, I got some good ones because I've traveled to cover the sport for a little while, and I got a real good one from 2017. Some of you were sharing yours. I'm going to share mine with you. I was working in the local news world down in Columbus, Georgia. It was 2017, and I was doing uh, high school sports on Fridays. I was a news anchor down there. I was the sports director at WLTZ. And so I'm doing high school football on Fridays. I cover college football on Saturdays. Then we do what would become late kick. At the time, we called it football nightly down south. And we're doing that on Sundays, same time we do this show now, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. So let me hit you with this little itinerary. And I want you to think this one out loud with me. September, what was it, Colin, the 20th or the 21st? It was week three of the 2017 season. Georgia has a road trip to Notre Dame. Now, we're lucky in Columbus because we could reasonably get credentialed to Georgia games, Auburn games, and Alabama games, Florida State games, and Florida games, and Clemson games, and South Carolina games. We're just right there where we could justifiably apply to all of them, and we got credentialed to all those. So it's a perfect spot to be. So we get approved for the Notre Dame game, Georgia at Notre Dame. Once-in-a-lifetime trip, it hardly ever happens. Those out-of-conference games, remember, everyone's scheduling big out-of-conference now. They hadn't been doing it for a long time down south. And so we get credentialed. Here's the problem. The problem is I have to be back by Sunday. I mean, that game's a 7.30 p.m. Eastern time kickoff in South Bend, Indiana. Got to be back 24 hours later. It's a 12-hour trip each way. How are we going to pull it off? So I ask one of the meteorologists there, henceforth to be named Bear, and another PA, henceforth to be named Minion, I ask them, if you can come and help split the driving duties, I'll get you credentialed. So they say yes, and I get him credentialed. So here we go. We are doing high school football on Friday night. We anchor it. We get off air at 11.34 and 30 seconds. That's the exact time we got off air when we were doing high school football. Go home, get about one or two hours of sleep, maybe max. And then we load up the equipment, and here we are, taking off from Columbus, Georgia, which for those unfamiliar is about an hour south of Atlanta. And we're taking off to go to South Bend, Indiana. No rest, no stops, no hotel, no nothing. It's 12-hour, roughly a 12-hour straight shot, and that's going from Columbus through Birmingham, through Nashville, through Louisville, through Indianapolis, all to South Bend. It's like 65 most of the way until you get to Indiana. And so you got some game day traffic that stretch it. So let's call it a 13-hour trip. We got there at about 5 p.m. Game kicks off in two and a half hours. And so we get in Notre Dame Stadium, which in and of itself is just an experience. You get to go see Touchdown Jesus. You get to go and see all the things that you've only seen on TV if you grew up in rural Georgia. So that was awesome. So then I pull out the iJosh. Not this one. This one's new. But the old iJosh. I'm in Notre Dame Stadium. If you don't remember this, half of the state of Georgia made this trip. Every one of them were in red. So I told Jesse this morning, welcome back, Jesse, by the way, not to be confused with Welcome Back, Cotter. That would probably be a better show. Welcome Back, Jesse would be an even better movie. And I said, Jesse, I got some iJoss footage. Can you roll it? He said, you send it, I'll roll it. So he's got some. So the first piece of footage I want to show you, I sneak up in Notre Dame Stadium. I go up into like the second level and the scene was crazy. There was like a mob scene outside. As Georgia's team arrives, there's wall-to-wall -wall red. This is not a home game in Athens, mind you. And this is not some rando side entrance for the visiting team. This is just the main entrance at Notre Dame Stadium. And you can see a splattering of green and maybe a splattering of blue out there. But by and large, it was just red. And it was a crazy scene outside. So what I wanted to do is get there early, soak as much of it in as possible. But remember how this game went. So again, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us, and you hope to see a close game. This is Jake Fromm's first start. Quarterback for Georgia goes down week before. Jake Fromm inserted as a true freshman. His first start is on the road at Notre Dame. Georgia ends up winning the thing 20-19. to And every time there's a commercial break, you do what I'm doing right now if you're watching on YouTube. You try and capture as much of the scene as you can post-game. You're trying to capture as much of the scene as you can. No one was in a hurry to leave this field after this game. As you can see, again, if you're watching on YouTube, dude standing outside, uh, just walking around the end zone, going down to the student section, going down to their uh, visitors section. But you know what it was like? And I thought about this several times. I remember some of my thoughts during the game. When I was a kid and I was growing up, there were, there were like really old VHS tapes 
of like old Georgia games or old Bama games, several of Bryant's games in the 60s and the 70s, and you'd watch them. And these are people who in some cases have long since passed away before I've been born. Obviously, the games are in another era, but I, I watched it like if USC were to come into Legion Field in Birmingham, Sam Cunningham in tow, and you're watching that game. That doesn't even feel like it's the same reality you're living. This is another world. I felt during that game like I was kind of in a VHS, not in a literal sense, but I felt like I'm, I'm part of something right in this moment. There I am on TV in the orange shirt. I'm on the field taking part in something this moment that people who are my age at the moment will show kids 30, 40 years from now, hey, this is when Georgia went to Notre Dame. This was a rare thing. And so I felt that. So we were in no hurry to leave. So after the game, we go to Brian Kelly's press conference. We go to Kirby Smart's press conference. But then when we get done, as is usually the case, I'm never in a hurry to leave the stadium because I don't like sitting in gridlock traffic. So what I like to do a lot, and this is a pattern I do every time, but especially at Notre Dame, what I did is I just go back out in the crowd. I go up in the bleachers. I take a couple of laptops with me and the eye Josh in this case, and I just sit. And that's exactly what I did. This shot right here is an empty Notre Dame stadium. What other walk of life could you find yourself in this very position at that very moment? That's what I'm thinking as I'm shooting this. And so sit there, watch some games wrap up. You're watching highlight footage from the day, trying to start to get your show put together for the next night because of what comes next. So you mosey your way back to your car. We got out of there about 1 or 1.30, straight shot all the way back. The meteorologist and I, Bear and I, we switch places. Minion, who is probably not out of high school at this point, sleeps the whole way. 12 hours, sleeps the whole way. Curled up like, I'm not going to use that terminology. He's curled up like something in the back. And he just sleeps the whole way. So we get back about lunchtime, a little after lunchtime in Columbus. And there is no time to sleep because we got to stack the show. we got to have a certain standard met too. So we stack that show. We do the show on Sunday night. And then I go into complete recluse mode. I hibernate all of Monday. It was like Sunday happened, Tuesday happened, Monday, just a rumor. Don't really even know that anything occurred that day. But it was a very fun trip. And so, like, I'm thinking it's only three or four years ago now, but I still look back on it, still talk about it all the time. I mean, the buddies I'm discussing right now will probably light up my phone before I even get off air. But I would encourage you guys, so now that obviously we've got things opening back up a little bit, uh, I, I have a lot of folks ask me, should I take this trip? Should I take that trip? I don't know what your finances are. I don't know what your schedule is. I'm saying if you could even reasonably swing some of this stuff, always buy the memory. The memory is what's worth its weight in gold. Because we had to foot the bill for some of this stuff. Even though I was working in media, it was not exactly a, a trip that the station was ready to fund fully. And that's its own separate story that we can't tell on air, statute of limitations and all. But I don't regret for a second paying for any of it. What I very, very much am happy we did is you got the memory to take home with you. So if you are a fan of a program this year, if you're an LSU fan and you guys are playing at UCLA, go. If you can go, go. I mean, if local ordinances allow you to, go. I mean, if you're one of these teams that gets to play like Oregon going to Ohio Stadium, going to Ohio State, go. Go see the horseshoe. You don't ever know if you're going to be able to do that again. I always encourage it. And if you can find a couple of quarters to rub together to pay for gas, make it happen. And, and I would also tell you this, you never know what kind of benevolent souls may be out there in your immediate social circle who are well enough off financially, who themselves regret not taking more trips when they were younger, and they may step up, and they may say, psst, handshake. That's not because you're a four-star recruit. That's because I want you to be able to take this trip. Spend that money wisely. You never know. Never hurts to ask is all I'm saying. So I would very much look forward to your own stories about your own road trips. And when this video goes up as an individual video tomorrow on the YouTube channel, I'll be looking forward to it.